So as usual, I was scrolling Twitter and I saw this tweet. Now we're getting another Splatfest. And what's big about this Splatfest is the fact that it's a regional Splatfest. So Splatoon North America tweeted, SRL Splatfest research team here with new findings. The 11 Splatfest theme will be, what's your go-to greeting? Handshake, fist bump, or hug? And I'm gonna tell you guys right now, I don't wanna touch any of you guys. I'm gonna be real, I'm gonna be real. I learned that some of you guys I already know do not wash your hands. I've seen it. I've genuinely, I've seen it and I, I've learned that the fist bump is usually what I go to, but a lot of times it's, it's the head nod is my favorite. And the fact that the head nod isn't here doesn't make sense. So I'm gonna go with fist bump, that's just me. As scientists, we're disappointed that terse nod, what, was left out, but we'll observe from 4 p.m. PT on 11.17 to 4 p.m. PT on 11.19 anyway. What? What, what? what does this account be saying? I really don't understand sometimes. But outside of that, you had a lot of people with a lot of thoughts about this because Splatoon Japan, they're having a completely different Splatfest for this. And then funny enough, you had somebody that even at a point, because at first it looked like it was only going to be Nintendo Europe that was going to be getting this and may, possibly we might get something different. So for you, some of you that may not know in Splatoon 1, we actually all used to have different themes. I think part of Splatoon 2, I can't really remember. Somebody will say it down below in the comments and be like, but Ken, and I, I already know, so somebody will explain it. But outside of that. We had Splatdroid that was like, nah, but I'm glad we didn't get this one. It's boring. And if you see it at, with his tweet after, you, you can tell what exactly that means. Because a little while later, North America tweeted that we will have the same exact Splatfest. And for a lot of people, they were there were a lot of interesting comments about this. Because there is something that I'll say about Regional Fest later on. But... And this was something that was already in the game. Supposedly, as somebody already clarified, it was already in the game. But you had some people with a little bit of a, their own opinions. So there was Leon that said, stop doing Splatfests altogether. They're so old, boring, outdated, and especially since 3, they're always one-sided, leading to results where one side gets zero points. Please, Nintendo, pay attention to Big Run. They're a, a thousand times, not a hundred a thousand times better than Splatfest. And I'm going to be honest with you. We all know this isn't going to happen. I think everybody complains about Splatfest after a while, no matter who you are. So you go through the new phase of new player, first time playing Splatoon. You, you get into Splatfest. You're like, all right, cool. I like Turf Wars. Splatfest is really cool. I get sea snails from them. They're really great. But then after a while, you start realizing this is the same thing just with different themes and maybe colors. And that's really it. It's Turf War at the end of the day. So some of you guys absolutely love Turf War and that's perfectly fine. But some of us learn to love the rank modes. So what ends up happening is you can't play the rank modes for the weekend and some people will say, yes, it's good for a break. But I'm gonna tell you right now, Splatfest aren't going anywhere. Do they need to reinvent them? Yes, definitely. And especially after this one, please let's not be held down by the, the number being the reason why they do something, in my opinion. Please, that would be absolutely amazing. So you even had Rachel that said, no representation for the people who hate being touched. Shaking my head. And I said something similar because of the fact that I just don't want to touch y'all. And that's really it. I'm going to be honest. Like, I've, I've even done it to family members. It, it, that's why I'm going to be going with Fist Bump because it's the only one where I can just give you my knuckle and that's about it. But that that's that's me. How do you feel about that? I'm just going to say that I'm really, especially after a you-know-what situation, I'm I'm very like, let's let's stay away from each other. But there are some others that have different ideas of what the fourth option should have been. So, you know, we have Handshake, Fist Bump, hug but somebody wanted the fourth option to be kiss and they said this is why we need a fourth option so you already know with the splatoon community they just love to create memes like this nintendo obviously for very obvious reasons will never ever have the option of kiss never they they will never stand for it never have it some people were even criticizing some of the art why does the hug art look like a splatoon sfm 
And I didn't realize it at first because I don't pay attention to these things. I'm going to be very honest with you guys. Uh, and I didn't notice it. But when you do look at the image, you can kind of tell that, yeah, it looks like it's actual like renders of the Inklings. So or, I, I have no idea. But that's just me. So let me ask, what team are you choosing? There are some people that will be joining Team Fisting. You heard that correctly. And there were some people that will be joining Handshake and, of course, Hug. Well, we all know that I'm going to be going for with the fist bump. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm actually going to be going with that. Will this be Fry's first win? Possibly. I'm going to laugh if it's going to end up being big man because hugs. I, I, some of you guys really love touch. So I think some people might be going that. But this might be a, fr a, a fight between Fry and big man because I don't know who's picking handshake. Some of you guys are weird if you really are. But let me know what you think. And also outside of that, my name is Ken Knows. As you guys know it, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe on this video. If you guys have been enjoying the videos and the content that we've been doing here, I hope you guys have been enjoying it. Let me know. Let me know down below in the comments. And don't forget to share the content. It really does make a difference. And it helps out with the algorithm because we're trying to go further. So moving on, we actually had Oatmeal Dome tweeting about how regional fests work. As I said, they were already in the game. This is something that basically they could have done for a while. And I guess they're doing it now. But I, there's one thing I actually do have to say. Did they do this because of the the responses to basically Fry losing over and over again? Or was this already planned? That's one of the things that I would really love to know. But hey, let me know what you think about that. But I'm going to move on to what they what Old Mill Dome said. So how do regional Splatfests work? Your Splatfest region setting determines which Splatfest you can participate in. You are able to play with anyone who's participating in the same Splatfest, even across region. Results are also counted per Splatfest. Because the Americas and Europe have the same theme and start times, it's highly likely that the greetings Splatfest will be across region, which is actually kind of cool. So far, Japan is the only region that will be isolated. Hong Kong and South Korea do not have an announced Splatfest as of this tweet. You can change a region in the lobby terminal However, you cannot change your region within 60 days of participating in a Splatfest. Also, note that new news dialogue, team names, etc. will be left untranslated if the Splatfest you're playing in doesn't support your language. Oh, that's interesting, actually. But yeah, no, that's basically what's going to be going on with this. So let me know what you guys think. Are you guys excited about this? I will say this one thing about regional Splatfest. What this... J Japanese Splatfest for them looks very weird. It's like the three meat things. I have no idea what that means. I, I haven't seen anybody actually translate it yet. But outside of that, there's one thing that I will say, and I hope that they don't do this with these original Splatfests. Please don't give Japan all the dope Splatfest. And what I mean by that is they do a lot of sponsor Splatfest with Japan. I don't know the last one they've done with like the West in general. I don't even know if the last one was genuinely Splatoon 2. But I hope that they don't do that and basically only give them all the cool Splatfest where there's going to be possibly maybe different gear, maybe different things that they do. I really hope that that doesn't show up again. But hey, that's me. And as I said, I, it's Splatfest at the end of the day. So I'm going to be real with you guys. I do not care about Splatfest. I play it because I'm a content creator. But outside of that, that's really it. Sea snails. And that's all I really get out of it. So tell me what you think. So Nintendo put out a new trailer for Super Mario RPG. It's basically the overview trailer. So we're gonna watch that literally like right now. I'm definitely gonna be playing this game. On a seemingly normal day, Mario went to Bowser's keep to rescue Peach. But just as he was about to save her, a giant sword fell from the sky and pierced through the castle. <laughs> what? Now, it's up to Mario and his allies, including Bowser, to save the keep and save the world. I never actually played this game. This is a very wacky Quirky game. And unusual adventure is about to begin. Super Mario RPG. Adventures with allies. 
You'll control Mario during your adventure. Of course. Others will join you, including Peach, the famous princess of the Mushroom Kingdom. And the models Bowser, look really good. Who's usually Mario's nemesis. <laughs> Two original characters will also become allies. Mallow, a bit of a crybaby who thinks he's a young frog. And Gino, a messenger from Star <laughs> Road who inhabits a doll to fight alongside Mario. I like how they just treat him like some Other small thing. With eccentric personalities will help you along the way. I didn't realize this game was this wild. This colorful world is teeming with all sorts of landscapes, like steep mountains, gloomy waterways, and perplexing. This game is very vibrant. Wow. Touch an enemy to initiate a turn-based battle. You'll fight by selecting an action from four. Like I've commands. seen the commercials for these, but wow. In addition to regular attacks, you could use specials. This is very much a glow up. Character. Specials aren't limited As it should to be. damage dealing attacks. They can also restore HP or give allies a boost. The most important thing in battle is the action command. Press the A button with good timing and you'll deal more damage to enemies or decrease the damage you take from attacks. Yo, this the... can help you wow. win battles. Additionally, if you time your attacks perfectly, you'll deal damage to all enemies. Every successful action command will gradually fill this gate. No, this game looks really good. I'm not going to lie. You can unleash the three character super special triple move. This move changes depending on who's currently in your party, and each triple move is beneficial in its own way. So give them all a shot. No, when people that play this back in the day must be losing their mind. They Do added a breezy mode? mode? enemies more easily and level up faster. It's a great option for first-time RPG players. That's actually really cool. Plenty of peculiar monsters lie around every corner. You'll meet foes from the Mario series and enemies different from the usual. Like this odd fellow in a tower. I wonder if they added anything. A fearsome pirate in a sunken ship. <laughs> Not to mention an entire weapon-based army that took over Bowser's keep. After clearing the main story, you can fight some of the bosses again. Oh wow. But they're stronger than before, so watch out. And I just said 9999. What? An especially powerful boss is lurking somewhere in this world. Oh, of course, not gonna show that. Take a break from the adventure with me. There's mini games. games. Jump between barrels to collect coins in Midas River. Ride Yoshi and get racing in Mushroom Derby. Hit the rails and turn corners carefully in Minecar. Lots of other mini games are out there. In oh, addition, wow. You can swap the music to the original Super NES version at any time outside of battle. Or check the info of enemies you've encountered in the monster list. <laughs> Wait, what? I remember that. The very first RPG in the Mario series returns. The Super Mario RPG game launches on the Nintendo Switch system November 17th. I'm definitely picking it up. are available now on Nintendo eShop. I might actually have to get a copy of this. Like, I might actually have to get a physical copy. No, that looks really good. Let me know what you guys think. Are you guys excited for this? Are you going to be picking this up? I'm definitely going to stream it. So make sure to, you know, hop by my stream. You already know where it is down below in the description. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. So we actually got word from Rockstar. Rockstar Games that there's going to be more information finally about GTA 6. I know a lot of us have been waiting for this. A lot of us have been waiting since GTA 5. I remember where I was and what I was doing. People are even posting pictures of what they've looked like when GTA 5 came out and when the announcement for GTA 6 was given. 
And so Rockstar put out a bunch of tweets. Next month marks the 25th anniversary of Rockstar Games. Thanks to the incredible support of our players worldwide, we have had the opportunity to create games we are truly passionate about. Without you, none of this would be possible. And we are so grateful to all of you for sharing this journey with us. In 1998, Rockstar Games was founded on the idea that video games could come to be as essential to culture as any other form of entertainment, which is very true. And we hope that we have created games you love in our efforts to be part of that evolution. We are very excited to let you know that in early December, we will release the first trailer for the next Grand Theft Auto. We look forward to many more years of sharing these experiences with all of you. Thank you, Sam Hauser. So when do you guys actually think this is going to come out? Because they could show a trailer and then it could say 2030. You know, you know that I'm just saying that's the reality. This trailer could say that and it could be like, oh, 2028. And so when do you guys realistically think that we'll actually get this game? When do you think we'll actually be able to play this game? What console? Will we be even be able to play this game on? Because we don't know which console is going to be at that point in time. So we'll see. Maybe it is for this generation that's coming out. It would blow the world away if they said in that trailer that it's coming out maybe like the summer. That'd be absolutely insane. Let me know what you guys think. Are you excited for GTA 6? Let me know. You know, I never understand the people that get upset about superheroes passing on their like likeness to somebody else because they are just the costume sometimes. But there's... A lot of people that are starting a lot of controversy for no apparent reason at all. And you have clips like these. Miles Morales is Miles Morales. And as you see, this person is basically saying Miles Morales is Miles Morales because for some reason, that's not their Spider-Man. I have no idea why people care so much that Miles Morales is Spider-Man. It's really not that big of a deal. There's like, we watched movies with multiple Spider-Man. And you know, the funny thing is to a newer generation of kids, this actually is their Spider-Man. Peter Parker's our Spider-Man because that's what we saw on TV. That's really it. It's not that hard. It's like a whole generation of black kids. Why we love Static Shock. We got to see him. There's other black superheroes. We didn't get to learn about them sadly all the time, but these situations are really dumb. And, and I'm gonna be honest, it's just because the game said that the next iteration of Spider-Man games is gonna have Miles Morales. And at the end of the game, you saw Miles Morales be told that he, like, obviously he's Spider-Man because Peter Parker is taking time off. It's really not that crazy. So then they even continue to say, finding old tweets where I said I liked Miles Morales isn't a gotcha. I can simultaneously like the character and not accept him as a replacement for Peter Parker. Same thing with reboot Laura Croft. I like her as a separate character, but not as Laura Croft replacement bro there's just actually it's actually kind of insane in my opinion that you would go this far in my like just my opinion that's all i gotta say it's really not this big of a deal like at all so you even had other people that came in and were saying y'all never have this energy for characters like blue beetle or the flash and there'd be like 48 different flashes all active across multiple comics and continuities how come there is never any dispute about who is the Flash when concerning Jay Garrick and Barry Allen, bro? It's it, you know why you you know why when you have to grift this hard, it's actually insane in my opinion. And somebody actually said it. Shut up, grifter. I'm playing Spider-Man Miles Morales and absolutely adoring it, despite having absolutely nothing relatable to the character. I don't need a character to look like me to enjoy them. I like diversity and GTA 5's cast is absolutely flawless. What? Bro, like the funny thing is somebody actually posted a clip that actually makes a lot of sense when you're talking about the just talking points of Miles Morales and any superhero when it comes down to it. That's really it. We've come to a time where things are changing. And if you need to understand it anymore, somebody actually posted this. If you say Miles Morales is Miles Morales, stay away from Spider-Man. And they posted this video. You know one of the greatest things about Spider-Man's outfit, his costume? What? He is completely covered. 
So any kid could imagine he's Spider-Man because no color of the skin shows. He could be black under that. He could be red. He could be yellow. He could belong to any race. And that True. wasn't done purposely. It was done accidentally. But I think it was the best thing we did, making him so that he could be anybody under that costume. Now, if even Stan Lee can make a point like this, the person that gave us a lot of these amazing characters, I think we need to drop this. It's absolutely insane. Who cares? In other gaming news, because Shinobi brought this to us on Twitter, WB will focus on more live service games going forward. I don't understand this thought process. I really don't. I, I like how many of you guys are tired of live service games? So they continued. This is the quote. Our focus is on transforming our biggest franchises from largely console and PC based with three, four year release schedules to include more always on gameplay through live services, multi-platform and free to play extensions with the goal to have more players spending more time on more platforms. Can anybody explain to me how that makes sense after everything that's just been going on? I don't know if they're like, I really need to know who sits behind these desks. Like, I, I want to hear the meeting. Ultimately, we want to drive engagement and monetization of longer cycles and at higher levels. We have put specific capabilities. We are currently under scale and see significant opportunity to generate greater post-purchase revenue. CEO David Zavzlov, whatever, I'm, I apologize about your name, quarter three earnings call and people were absolutely clowning this person there were just even memes of just saying please stop as you guys see on your screen nobody wants any more loot boxes battle passes all of it in just nothing like just give us a regular game at this point and even just saying people saying the nc master saying focusing on live services after this year is certainly a choice and as you can see in the articles you literally had a lot of things knockout city rumble verse it even just it just kept going with all of the situations that were happening mobile games that were just shutting down why would anybody think yes this is what they want to see and you had jolly j that even said is warner brothers dumb and they posted the basically showing marvel's avengers failure is a valuable lesson for an unsustainable industry it's unsustainable please understand that it is very very unsustainable why are we trying to do this still? And all I have to say is the funny enough, somebody brought up the topic of some of their best selling games are the ones that are single player focus. This just reeks of either desperation or greed. And I'm gonna be honest with you. If you haven't played Shadows of Mordor, amazing game, amazing game. And then on top of that, they had Shadows of War, uh, Batman, Arkham Knight, and I did not play that other game. I'm just going to let you guys know that right now. Mines are for different reasons because I, I, I grew up with super Christians and, and my parents would never let me touch them in a day in my life. And till this day, I still believe that I will die if I pick up a book and I haven't been to church in years. So outside of that, uh, just to let you guys know, yeah, no, I don't understand their thought process when it comes down to that. It's greed. A lot of the things that we're seeing lately, in my opinion, are very much just like over, like just like the levels of greed that we're seeing are just, in my opinion, nasty. And I wish that they would give more back to their consumers instead of just taking. And I'm going to be real. It, <laughs> live service games just need to stop at a point like you can have some, but not every game needs to be a live service game. Let me know what you think. Outside of that, Mario Kart 8 actually got updated and with like actual updates. It's been years. So we had Bear actually talking about all the things that were coming up. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Wave 6 DLC 3.00 patch notes, the final update. Insane changes to the game as a whole. And uh, I'll put it up on screen because I'm not obviously I don't I don't play Mario Kart like that. So if you guys want to look at it, just pause and I'll have them up on your screen. But outside of that, they did talk about the huge changes highlights for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Wave 6 DLC. So one was room IDs doesn't require friend code exchanges. This is this is something that should have happened a long time ago. I'm sorry. I'm tired of adding people as friends when trying to do this Two nerfed 
bagging strategy. Now, if a lot of you guys understand, yes, there were people that literally sandbagged to win. And funny enough, it's actually been a part of Mario Kart's history for like ever. Uh, three, more invincibility frames. And four, more item box respawn. More to analyze after playing tonight. And they continue on to say, yep, looks like it's over for bagging strategy in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Homie pulled a, a green shell in 12th on GBA Cheese Land, a sandbagging staple. RIP sandbagging 2017 to 2023. And as you guys see on the clip, basically that they can't sandbag anymore. They're not getting items that would allow them to basically affect the race. And that's the change that some people want to see it. Some people don't want to see it. Let me know what you think. So yeah, that's it for Mario Kart. Let me know what you guys think. Are you guys excited about this? Are you guys going to be playing? Should I stream this? I have no idea what to do with streaming anymore. I'm going to be honest with you. I do enjoy Splatoon, but it's it's getting a lot. It's getting a lot to do these videos and then do Splatoon content. It's it's very hard. I'm going to be very honest with you guys. This takes a lot of research. I'm going to be very, very real. I know a lot of you guys see these as just tweets, but it is me like looking them up, looking up topics, trying to make sure that the topic makes sense, trying to make sure the topic is good for the video. So I've been trying to figure out streaming because playing Splatoon and doing these videos, very, very hard. I'm going to be very honest with you guys. But we do have our last topic, and our last topic is actually on Nintendo will release a beta version of Tournament Manager later this month. It will support elimination format tourneys. The full launch will be in December with support for round robin tourneys. Support for Swiss tourneys will be added later. And yeah, no, that's actually really major for this game. I'm wondering where they're going to go with this. Or is Nintendo going to have more frequent tournaments just by themselves? That This is very interesting, and I really can't wait to see the development of how this goes forward. Will anybody just be able to use it? Like, how, like how exactly, how user-friendly is it? I'm really excited to see it. Things like this do help the game just a little bit, in my opinion. But let me know what you guys think. And also on top of that, just want to say thank you guys for listening thank you guys for watching i really do appreciate it it really means a lot to me i'm not gonna lie also somebody asked for some re album recommendations because i did bring up the fact that i do absolutely adore hip-hop so just to give you guys a couple kids at play mike tyson jab really great group very energetic i, I would tell you guys to give it a listen please do no name sundial hit boy surf or drown this is one of my favorites personally Smino, Love for Rent, A Tribe Called Quest, Midnight Marauders. And yes, that is an old one. Very, very old, back in the 90s. But I would tell you guys, give it a try. One of my favorites. I even have just a, an actual record album just in general because I love it so much. So if you guys wanted to know any more, just let me know. And as I said, I talk about these type of things in my stream. But as I said, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe so that we can hit 20K. I'm going to catch you guys later. Have an amazing day. Peace out.